What is up, you sexy YouTube mother lovers? If you've been living under a rock, about a week ago, the AK community got some interesting news. Defying interest. Oh God, oh God, we're all gonna die? Yes, in a timely response to something that happened a year ago, the Biden administration has announced sanctions against Russia, most notably banning the importation of Russian made ammo. No big deal, really, because this is just all I fucking shoot. About a day after the news dropped, we did a gun meme review where in the first half we kind of covered, uh, we touched on the ammo ban, uh, but I really wanted to do a dedicated video talking about what this actually means for shooters in America in general and just AK guys specifically. I don't want to say that there's a lot of misinformation going around, but there's a lot of stuff that is conjecture at best. And believe it or not, I actually did some reading on this. Yes, as it turns out, I can read. Ish. So I delved into the sanctions themselves and into some firearm industry data and there's some kind of interesting stuff that I don't think a lot of people are talking about. So that's what I'm sharing with you today. First we're going to start out with the bad news and then we're going to move into the good news. If there could be good news. So yeah, I'm, I'm not about to piss down your back and tell you it's raining. Unless you're into that. No, still not gonna do it, I'm, I'm not into that. But yes, while this is an overall negative thing, there are some details in here that I don't think are gonna make this as bad as we were maybe fearing. Don't give me hope. So let's start off with the bad news. Ammo's fucked. Well, not completely, like I said, we're gonna get into that, but it, it, this is pretty significant, so let's delve into the numbers. These sanctions prevent us in the US from getting Russian-made ammunition. No, you can't just ship it to another country even though it came from Russia and then send it to the States. That is still Russian made ammunition. Nobody's gonna lose their importer license trying to pull some War Dogs 2 type shit. Probably. But why is Russian made ammunition being banned such a big deal? So according to Small Arms Analytics, uh, we imported 765 million rounds of ammo from Russia in 2020 alone. This is 765 million rounds out of the total 3.5 billion rounds of ammunition that we imported in 2020, uh, meaning that Russia is the number one supplier, the number one country uh, that we get imported ammo from. At 765 million, they single-handedly make up around 22% of imports according to the stats. I'll leave some links and things in the description, by the way, if you guys want to read into this yourself. So while this does mean that 762 is in a little bit of hot water, what this really impacts are the calibers that really aren't common outside of like the com block arena. So you've got calibers like 9x18 Makarov, 545x39, uh, the AK-74 caliber, 762x25 Tokarev, uh, 762x54R. It almost single-handedly kills 9x39. Uh, just because that I think Russia was uh, the only country really producing that and importing it here. But it's not just a big deal for us weird comblock guys. I've touched on this a bit before, but it also affects guys who shoot AR-15s, 9 mils, whatever, because a lot of the cheap supply of the uh, El Cheapo steel case, uh, 223, 9 millimeter, all that stuff comes from Russia. So this is potentially driving up ammo prices across the board for everybody, not just the AK guys, although does kind of seem like uh, the State Department's putting our PP in a vice pretty specifically on this one. So yeah, that's been the prevailing opinion online. Uh, shit's fucked, which, yeah. Or is it? I do actually have a little bit of good news, potentially good news. Really, there's no way to know how this is gonna play out, but there are some things that I think people are missing. I'm gonna get into that in a second, but first, time to thank our sponsor. You know, the only reason I can afford expensive props like 40 rounds of 7.62 for this video. <laughs> Our sponsor today is Jake's Mint Chew. If you're looking for a nicotine-free tobacco alternative, Jake's Mint Chew is a pretty good place to start. They've got all sorts of flavors like wintergreen, they've got cinnamon, they've even got some CBD stuff. CBD, not THC, the other thing. Uh, I, ATF, I don't have a dog yet, but I might want to have one one day, so please don't confuse the two. But we want to thank Jake's Mint Chew for being a supporter of the channel. We appreciate them. I'm going to leave the links down in the description and in the pinned comment. <laughs> Back to the ammo thing. So the good news. It looks like this may not be a hard cutoff. At least not as hard of a cutoff as the one time you threw up on the pretty bartender's cleavage and then were escorted face first to the sidewalk outside. Wait, that was just me, wasn't it? 
But that aside, my point is actually in the verbiage of the sanctions themselves. So I'm gonna read directly from the State Department sanctions, and then I'm gonna cue in on the interesting part. Restrictions on the permanent imports of certain Russian firearms. This has already been a thing for years, so I, I don't know why they're including this. New and pending permit applications for permanent importation of firearms and ammunition manufactured or located in Russia will be subject to a policy of denial. That's the interesting part. It is not banning the importation of ammo, at least not directly. It is saying that all pending and future applications to import ammo from Russia will be subject to a policy of denial, which means they'll just be denied. What this means is that there are already approved Form 6 import forms that could be tens of millions of rounds of Russian ammunition that have already been approved and green-lighted and are still coming into the country. Could be millions, could be tens of millions, I really don't know. So even though this goes into effect in a couple of days, we're still going to be getting trickles of Russian ammo in from already approved import forms. I'd also like to point out those can go like, I think 12 to 24 months into the future, something along those lines, which is really interesting because the sanctions themselves say that they are to be reevaluated in a year. Now, I'm not putting a whole lot of stock in that uh, just because like, what is it that Milton Friedman said? Uh, There's nothing more permanent than a temporary government program. Once we get restrictions like this, very rare do they let up. However, they're the ones who put the limitation on their own sanctions, so we'll see what happens in a year. Uh, but that does mean that there is a possible timeline, and God, I hope we're living in it, that these sanctions get reversed before the last approved import forms are, are done with. So while ammo imports from Russia might slow down, they might never actually even go away. I'm not a betting man, but if I were, I don't think that that's gonna happen, uh, but it could. So that's at least worth talking about. Kind of anybody's game, unless you could tell the future, which I clearly cannot. Uh, who knows? In the meantime, I do have more good news, or at least a little Benadryl to make the pain go away. People have already talked about throwing out their AKs, uh, throw out your AK-74, just, just tossing all this shit, because it's worthless now, because you can't get the cheap ammo. Uh, that's, that's horseshit. Again, I'm not gonna tell you that ammo prices aren't gonna go up because they already fucking have. Prices 762 and 545 pretty much doubled. Uh, thankfully, they're kind of holding there. I never thought I'd say thankfully about 55 cent around 762, but here we are. But it's reassuring to know that there are other countries that we import things like 762 from. 762, 9x18 Makarov, uh, 762x54R, a lot of these Comblock calibers are still manufactured all over Europe. Stuff like this I was talking about before, the Bellum ammo, the, the Brass K762 by 39, that, that Gucci shit that I only feed my AKs on their birthday. PPU, Fiocchi, all over. Like there's, I mean, we still get ammo from, uh, from Serbia, from Hungary, uh, just all over the damn place. Czech Republic, Romania, Ukraine. There are a lot of places we still get these kind of Soviet ammo types from. I would like to think that they're going to be able to at least somewhat fill that hole in the market because there is going to be a hole for sure. Now, as you might imagine, manufacturing millions of rounds of ammunition is difficult and it is expensive and it takes a lot of tooling. So this is not something that's going to happen quickly, uh, but it is something that I do hope is going to happen. And no, I'm not opening an ammo factory. Please stop asking. I don't trust myself to reload ammo for myself without blowing myself up. So. Yeah, no, not happening. All jokes aside, I don't think people truly understand how much goes into the manufacturing of uh, cartridges from scratch, down to sourcing the brass, to forming the brass, to getting primers, which are basically more fucking rare than ammo these days. There's a lot that goes into it. If you were to start up from the ground, it's, it takes several years, millions and millions of dollars, and I, I think people just kind of oversimplify it in their head because they think they can buy a reloading press at Cabela's. But yes, that tangent aside, no, the AK is not dead. We still have a lot of ammo here, we have a lot of ammo still on the way, and there are other countries that are hopefully gonna pick up the torch and uh, kind of pick up the slack for where Russia can no longer get us what we need. Plus, who knows, there's a lot of domestic manufacturers, at least for 7.62x39, a couple of the other calibers, uh, that might be picking up the slack as well. I'd love to see that. I have no shithead people arguing that this these sanctions were done because Biden wants us to have American-made ammo. I'll just let you think about that one. There are people out there that believe that. And they vote.
So while this is clearly a bayonet jab from the Biden admin to American gun owners, hopefully the unintended consequence is uh, more American domestic ammo production. Because you know that the government never has unintended consequences. But anyhow, guys, that's about all I've got for this video. I just wanted to dig a little bit deeper into this, kind of tell you guys what's going on, and uh, hopefully this has been educational for you. I try not to get too serious often. I know this stuff isn't fun, but I think it's important to know what's going on. So hopefully I helped you guys out with that, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you on a Gun Meme Review on Thursday. As always, I appreciate you guys staying to the end, and I'll see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thanks. Fear is my obsession to make the perfect weapon Like us put his eyes to the top But I can't let you can stop, can stop, can stop, can stop, can stop, can stop, can stop What is up you sexy YouTube mother lovers? If you haven't heard, if you've been living under a rock Last week Let me do that again What is up you sexy YouTube mother lovers? And if you- Fuck It's gonna be one of those now about a day after the news, uh, we did a gun meme review where we touched on it for like the first half of the video, but I really wanted to do a deep dive into what this actually means. Cause there's a lot of, I don't, I don't, I don't really want to, fuck, what the hell was that? At least not as hard of a cutoff as the one time you threw up on the pretty bartender's cleavage and were escorted face first to the, uh, face first, what the fuck? New and pending permanent app, oh, excuse me, if I could read. So while it's slow,